What is good? We're back. We got a tripod for your pleasure. We got uh, moves to make following week nine of the NFL season. Here. <laughs> Going quick. Going quick. Thank God. Get, <laughs> get rid of the season. Let's get into that off season, <laughs> baby. <laughs> All right, so we got some moves to make. We're going to talk a little charges. We're going to talk a little Drake May, Knicks. We're going to talk a little Zay Flowers and Deontay Johnson, how that situation is going to play out. Uh, but let's uh, let's jump right into the San Diego Super... No, LA Superchargers. San Diego Superchargers. We're better in San Diego. Yeah, definitely better in San Diego. Better ownership, better coaching staff now. Five and three, those LA Chargers are currently. You know, we've been kind of talking about teams and 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 the skills of teams for you know and the moves to make as we've been going on. And the Chargers this week were were intriguing to me because this is a huge culture change. There's good parts and pieces there. It wasn't quite what it was going to be to start off, and it never would be. But injuries really are, are what it you know inhibited this team getting off to a start past 15 years for the Chargers. (laughs) Well, sure. Uh, But this, this just seems feels uh, different. A a whole lot more resilient, a whole lot more good leadership sound from top to bottom, it seems. And, you know, I've been a big proponent of Herbert and, and loving what Herbert could possibly bring. And, And I think these last two weeks, you got to see Herbert starting to get healthy and, and Roman and Harbs and the rest of this offense get, into kind of what they want to be moving forward. Whereas the beginning of the season, you saw a lot of quick stuff, Herbert's foot and ankle and knee, and it just guy was banged up. So it was a lot of quicker stuff. So the, 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 the amount of time that Herbert's been holding on to the ball in these last few games and, and making decisions to throw and moving around has just been totally different than what we saw at the beginning of the season. Uh, and, and obviously you played the saints who are on a huge losing streak the week before, Ben, but, you know, can have a good defense and the Browns, you know, just beat the Ravens and also can have a good defense. And they went to Cleveland and, and took it to the Browns. Really? They really just dominated that entire game. Now, Jameis shows up and bees Jameis, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bees the, Jameis. <laughs> the Jameis that we all it kind of expect from time to time. But he's still, you know, he still got said he till the ball. He still got, you know, Jerry Judy, the ball. He still got Elijah Moore, the ball, you know. He's still, those guys were still usable, which is, you know, you're thankful for. But it, it took a minute to really see that come to fruition. And that was kind of the, the side of uh, that we talked last week was Browns. So this week, I wanted to spend a little time on the Chargers. We've been saying buy low on Herbert all off season long. And, you know, hey, everyone was worried about the volume. And, and yeah, the volume will probably be a little up and down. But I, but I was pretty sure that once the ship got right, that the, the volume would be more along the lines of what Sam Fran does and be efficient with that volume. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I think you saw some of that now. Will Roman's offense get stale? It has in the past. We'll see if it does in the future here for L.A., right? But Herbert right now is 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 looking the best he's looked, and he's dragging two wide receivers right now up with him. Uh, Lad McConkey won at wide receiver 19 right now, and Quentin Johnston, the other, who's missed a little bit of time but was left for dead, right? 14th, 15th round startup pick, and at that point, we were all – pretty excited about the startup pick for Quentin Johnson. We're like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take that shot. Right. We so, were right. Right. A lot of people, he, he was, Ow. he was dead, dead. So True. we could kind of pick up at any one. And, and we have JK Dobbins, who's RB 13. So there's a lot of good parts and pieces to this offense. And I just wanted to kind of see where the price tag were for all that and, and how you guys fell on kind of this offense and, and, and where you were. So we could quickly go around the room. I, I don't can't imagine anybody's out on Herbert. Uh, the, the price has been so low. Uh, and you know, right now is probably not the time to buy him two twenty plus point games. But well, you know, it's only twenty. Right you now, he still doesn't have a ton of real real weapons to work with, so to speak. Doing a lot with a rookie and a second year player who was left for dead, and then Palmer and Will Disley. You know, and, and J.K. Chark- Dobbins, who's been left, off for, IR. left for dead multiple times already. Mm-hmm. For me, I think it's still a great spot to still try to buy Herbert. You haven't had him, you know, go off. You haven't had the Chargers in a you know big Sunday night, Monday night primetime game come out there looking. You haven't seen you know vintage Herbert legs running around. You know they played the Cardinals a couple weeks ago. First drive, big sick pass 
And the guy catches it and it goes through for a touchback mm-hmm. instead of a 50 yard touchdown catch, you know, just stuff like that. Just really still keeping the value from where it's going to be, I believe, for Herbert. So, yes, just because you may not have acted earlier to get Herbert in a better buy low window when we were, you know, talking about that earlier, I believe it's better to buy a little bit higher now than have to maybe not afford him later or have to take such a big blockbuster deal to get him. Yeah. Big D, thoughts on Herbert? Yeah, man. I, I mean, I agree with what you all have already said and kind of laid out. I mean, after the bye week, he's been slinging the rock a little bit more as attempts are up. You know, one of the concerns of the, uh, of the off season was the offensive change and they're never going to throw the ball. And, you know, there has been a little bit of truth to that. They're in the lower, I think he's like 20th overall for, yeah, um, for attempts. Maybe. He's also very efficient. He's he's a quality, you know, above average quality quarterback. And he's uh, he's just now starting to warm up. Right. He's a uh, well, we got we got two back to back 20 point games and six point passing touchdowns. So one more and he's on fire, baby. So, <laughs> yeah, I think this is the time time to buy her. Well, 10 to one touch co- was reception ratio too. just want to throw that out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Big Co is correct. I, I think the time to buy him was probably earlier, but you're still getting a discount on a on a really high quality yeah. uh, quarterback that hasn't used his wheels in a while, but has the wheels. You kind of saw that in this last game, too. He's mm-hmm. got what four, you know, four or three. Well, not this last game. I guess it was the New Orleans game. He, he was yeah, four like rushes for 49 run. yards with yeah. a high of 12 in there. So, But you saw he, him moving he, around a little better in this exactly, game. Exactly, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been banged up all year. And, and it's tough for us to come in here and continue to push certain players because we've got them so low for before. And now it's not as cheap. Yeah. If you've been paying attention, you've sent offers out for Herbert. We've been on him for a while. But it's still obtainable. It's still not well, quite and, there. So and, we're still and, doubling down. A lot right? of people for your pleasure. A lot of people don't want to send the offer when he's not doing good because they're 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 exactly. like they're convinced that he's not going to be good well, anymore. That's and, why you and, get the deal. But this that's is why you're here. But this is what we're trying to do and 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 tell like this has been a guy who's performed well and I've seen him play top notch level quarterback. Things ebb and flow throughout, and this is what this whole game in Dynasty is really about, right? The price on Herbert has gone so low. I mean, we did a startup mock draft, and I think he was available in like the third or fourth round, you know, a few weeks ago. Sure, you know, and and a, and a two and a, a super flex, obviously, is what we're talking about. So this is this is how this works. The value goes down. You buy in on Herbert, you get him there, and then now this thing gets built back up, and in, in a year or two, people will be like, oh, Justin Herbert's you know, back to uh, top 10 quarterback and, and, you know, in the first, second round. And well, exactly. That's, that's the point of it is like, if you were trying to, if this is 26 t- years old, he's attainable. Like that's, it's not like you're saying, Hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy, you know, Patrick Lamar Jackson, Holmes, right Lamar now. Jackson, Jaden Daniels, Josh Allen, like the, you know, the cost, like you said. So in that, that mock that you did, he was, it was three Oh five. So he was fifth pick in the I third round. Him. You took him. Where, <laughs> where does he drop to, you right. know, 16 spot slide from what his ADP was before mm-hmm. and, and through us. So uh, it's just, he's attainable. If you, is it going to be, is he free? No, he's not free. Big D said he's above average. I think he's high, much, much higher than above average. Yeah. Say it every year. There's not 32 starting quarterbacks in this league. Mm-hmm. You know, the average is not 16, really. The average is much lower than that, mm-hmm. you know? And if you want to be a difference maker, you got to be good. You got to be really good. Yeah. And he's one of the very few that are really good. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, he can be a difference maker. And I, I just like what I started off saying is I just like the trajectory of where things are going under Harbaugh and Roman and uh, the D coordinator who's a mentor, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's all going well. The Chargers defense is playing good. They're getting healthy at the right time. We'll see what happens as far as if they address this receiving core moving forward. Harbaugh's not a guy who's going to come in here and have this electric receiving core. I think these guys can get it done. You'd like to see it maybe add somebody else, but we can kind of keep it moving on to those guys a little bit. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP and player pages. All for your pleasure. Mostly I want to talk about the Chargers because Quentin Johnson was so interesting to me right now because he was a guy who was dead, and but we kind of knew he needed some development. And it's not if you watch last year, it, it's just he was that guy who was the first round pick, uh, first round dynasty rookie guy. And for sure, he was just the in guy to for everybody to pile on and see, see, I told you he sucks. <laughs> and it's like, 
my guy is a rookie in the NFL. It doesn't happen for everybody at the same time. And we thought maybe he needed to develop a little bit. And then he got thrust into a role where he was their guy, right? In a, in a situation where Staley isn't, wasn't the right coach. That culture was trash. This yeah. culture is completely different. Harbaugh uh, went in there and, and told reassured this man and re started rebuilding his confidence. And he looks like a much more confident player out there uh, in year two. Right. And, and I saw a stat from, you know, fantasy da- data points, which, you know, we, we use, I think they're great. Um, and, and was saying, you know, basically he's, he's, he's got his, a bunch of his yardage off of the highest amount of yardage off of busted coverages. And I'm, I'm like, cool. All right. Well, I guess that's a bad thing, but if you take away all the big the plays, coverage got busted <laughs> for one reason or another, whether right. it was the scheme, whether it was the defense messed it up. And if, if it's happening more, you know, more than just a few times, then I think it's just, it's, it's then, you know, it can't just be luck every single time, True. right? Um, the point is, is I just I think he's playing well, and you know I'm sure is this a buy sell hold opportunity for Quentin Johnston for the room, and, and what would be the the cost for you guys here, uh, Big Co? Why not buy? I saw a trade go down in the FFPC league the other day, and it was I thought it was a really good trade. It's, Jay's got some Dynasty Daddy trades for us, and you know we always talk about the Dynasty Daddy as very bland trade. You see, you see names, you don't see anything about the trade. You don't. There's there's no context. Context. And there's there's no context to the trades, and there's no obviously there's no money ramifications to the side. Doesn't say how much it's worth for anywhere each, from a league. Twenty twenty seven round one, a twenty five two, a twenty twenty five third. This is a wide range of, but I'll say trades. just I'll say just the reason I laid that part out is because when you do look at the dynasty daddy, sometimes there's trades that we're like, oh, that's fake. Those, those, those that didn't matter. That didn't matter. But then some there's a couple of good trades here and there for almost anybody that you pull up that you're like, okay, that's that looks like a decent it gives deal. me a good range. Exactly, it gives you it gives you like a, a little format. You know, Quentin Johnson. Somebody gave up a three and a four, a third round pick and a fourth round pick for Quentin Johnson. You know, and then Hold there's a two. Obviously, you know, 2027 round one. Nobody's doing that. That's a fake trade. Uh, but a 2025. I mean, at, that, at that point, that's basically a two, though. You're going to yeah. trade away a three, three year out you know, yeah, but startup I, pick. I mean, that's, it's that's still a first silly. round pick. I'm not. It trading. is a first round pick, but it's not valued as a first. But round most pick of right them now. are. Most of them are threes. I'll, Would you trade the 25 two in a super flex? Sh- yeah, sure. Did you say yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Casey said, yeah, sure. I mean, I would look at it. I would think about it. It might, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Projected um, mid to look. But as a guy who, who, but as a guy who didn't have, who has a, a team that is a good team, but not very deep. And I drafted Quentin Johnson last year on a team, on one of our home leagues. And I needed him in my start lineup every week. And, and he sure wasn't there last year. And so it's like, all right, well, this year, now he's back. So I've lived it. I've lived. Uh, oh, he went to he mm-hmm. went to nothing, and he came back value wise. Like I wasn't ready to cut him. I wasn't ready to get him away in a trade for cheap, cheap. But like if I could get a two from a bad team, I might look at it. Yeah. You know. But I could definitely give away a two from a really good team if I need a little extra help. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. Har- Harbs came out before the season and said, "Hey, this guy's gonna make plays for us," yeah. and that's could be coach, coach speak, but it's it's come to fruition. Yeah, I mean, he's had some good games. He's had some okay games. He's been out. This game was obviously really good. Some busted coverages. How about um, that week at seven and eight, though? Busted coverages. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but mixed bag on the on the schedule here. You got the Titans next, which we know the Titans defense can be all right. But it, up and down. They're, 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 you know. Scrappy. At, Chargers are at home. Then they have the Bengals. Bengals are, you know, I think a good team, but just record-wise, a little, a little sloppy. Then they got the Ravens. Then Falcons, we know that that could be, you know, so there's potential for at least the Bengals and, and Falcons games to be higher scoring, Definitely. right? Uh, then the Chiefs, we know that's good. Bucks defense is, uh, you know, up and down. And then they finish Broncos, Patriots, Raiders. Uh, so they mixed bag there mm-hmm. for uh, kind of how the Chargers are finishing. Big D, what are your thoughts, Quentin Johnston, uh, value-wise, uh, in or out? Got, trying to say, hey, this is another chance for me to, to get rid of them again. Or, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think for me, he's he's a um, he he's a sprinkle piece, right? He's a he's a cherry. He's a like I saw a trade in there when you guys were scrolling through uh, Dynasty Daddy, where somebody's giving up Kamara and they're getting Quentin Johnston in a second, and I'm assuming that's a rebuilder, right? That that's a perfect scenario for me when it comes to Quentin. I don't think I'm buying him straight up for a pick. Because if I'm a contender, my second's going to be later, but I'm probably looking for more consistent points at this point than Quentin. Um, and if I'm, you know, a rebuilder, then I, I you know, I'm probably going to hold on to that second. And so, so for me, he's more of a try to see if I can have him uh, added on as a, 
as a piece that, you know, somebody is like, oh, yeah, well, I'll give you Quentin Johnson. Let's get this deal done type of thing. So yeah. so in that in that case, I'm I'm definitely a buyer. Yeah, but I don't I like that uh, Cooper Cup, Quentin Johnson yeah. swap. I wasn't. Yeah, the there you go. You know, mm-hmm. At the end of the day, not the worst. I found my trade that I was talking about. It was in a $250 league, uh, Quentin Johnson for a fourth round pick. That was before this week. So he had been hurt for a couple of weeks mm. and not not around. And I was telling Casey about it. I, I, I couldn't remember what league it was in. I had to look and find it real quick. But when I saw it in my email, it said, you know, trade executed. And you look it up. You're like, oh, my God, what happened? A fourth round pick for Quentin Johnson. I was like, that's a good trade right there. Picking up Quentin on that cheap. Yeah. And then he comes out and scores 20 points. Yeah, and I think you got DJ Chark coming back, and so you know it'll be interesting to see the next couple of weeks what what goes. And if you're looking to buy Quentin, there may be a, even a, a a better dip. Right now, coming off 22 points, it's a little challenging. But I think in general, you, the concept that you're trying to lay out is a good one. Lad is obviously the most expensive asset on this team at the wide receiver position. I think Lad is probably the most expensive, and uh, Josh Palmer is just sitting there, you know, waiting, boys. He's he's ready mm-hmm. to be plucked, you know, like. But uh, but when you go through the offensive weapons for this team, and and I think Gus Edwards being out, that you know the the running back room is just now coming around, or or it has been pretty decent with Dobbins going forward. Uh, you know, I I think structure wise, we're still seeing the development of what it's going to look like. But um, mm. yeah, some he, talk about potentially T Higgins maybe having a landing spot and mm. as a trade late 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 trade to to the Chargers there. So that would be interesting for for his value, but. For me, it's the the like I feel like each pass coming out of Herbert's hand is pretty valuable for what this team can be and and kind of where they can go, right? Yeah, I like that point. I mean, um, you definitely would be dr- buying Quentin after the best game of his career. Sure, I but mean that's this week. Know, obviously, that's, that's not the necessarily the the what you want to be doing right this second. I know it's moves to make but, right now. But if he but, crushes, or else, but if he gets another twenty point week next week, then that value is just that mm-hmm. much, you know? Yeah. Well, it's just an interesting conversation because you want to know the moves to make doesn't necessarily mean buy. It could be sell. It could, you know, if yeah. you hate this guy, you probably already sold. If you don't, then you're excited. I don't think the Chargers plan to be this good this quick. You know, I don't think they were ready to. It's almost like the Broncos. Like they're not supposed to be that good. They didn't prioritize the flashy skill position playmaking things. They didn't give Herbert a lot to work with. Yeah, well, that's not really how Harbaugh's ever built the team. They took the offensive lineman instead of the skill position player. You know, they, they built it from the ground up and, and they're playing well and they're a formidable, formidable force. And I'll say this last thing about Quentin Johnson, because uh, Big D tried to transition this into lad. I like that Big D. Good call. Uh, Quentin Johnson, it almost looks tough for him at sometimes. Like it's like he double catches it sometimes. He doesn't quite break a tackle. But then all of a sudden, boom, big touchdown. Like it's all he's almost like the Anthony Richardson of wide receivers. Like he hasn't even put it all together yet. And he's still his floor, you know, not that he's being consistent and I know he's injured, but like he's just it just seems like he's a big play waiting to happen. And we haven't even seen like the incredible yak. He's like a freight train when he gets the ball in his hands and he's just figuring out how to fucking catch the ball. And so there's so much more room to grow. And the fact that he is answering the call, the fact that they don't have very many playmakers that they He's together some, you know, picks and rookies and young players, and he's showing you he can do it. And there's just so much more room to grow. So it's pretty excited about. Quentin yeah, Johnson. this uh, the the whole offense and system all has as room to grow. And and him and being out those two games, I felt like they did really kind of miss him. They needed that guy on yeah, the outside who can you who can stretch monster. you. And now you can start to do stuff and maybe people put a little respect on his name things things are different because you know trans- even open that up even more right like, transitioning you know we'll see what happens with adding another if they add a crazy high value target then that might hurt quentin johnson a little bit but you know i, I do think herbert's a guy who can facilitate multiple guys as they kind of move forward lad you know we don't need to spend a whole lot of time on lad what, what i've seen from lad is what i saw from lad in college and was kind of expecting to see from lad if he can be healthy good luck in the zone and if you're gonna run man he's gonna kill you you can't cover him man to man. He's too good. And and you can see the Herbert, he, he's just been crushing targets. His target percentage is, is obviously the highest on the team. I, you know, I'm not even going to read all the stats from, from Lad McConkey, but it doesn't really matter all that much. What matters is that him and her, him and Herbert are building a rapport, building a tree of trust, knowing where they're going to be, how they're going to be. Uh, last week you saw Lad McConkey have the huge game this week, still pretty good been pretty decent through most of the season, been battling through some injuries. It's the only thing you could be worried about with Lad McConkey. At this point, at the very least, Lad has retained his value. And I, you know, I don't, I don't, is anybody, a, we, we could ask that question. Anybody a seller of Lad McConkey 
right now, Big D? No, I'm not. I, I don't think you're going to get any. I mean, maybe a tier up concept, you know, like if I'm a contender and I want to tier up from Lad to ASB or something, something to that effect. I think he's got enough value where you you might be able to swing a deal comparison to the beginning of the year, but but in general, in a vacuum, no, I don't. I don't think I'm selling uh, selling Lad. Because- yeah, I, I mean, I like it. I like it like that. He uh, he's better than he was as far as like the value. Like, get him come out of a rookie draft. Not sure. Sure, he's good. Will it translate immediately? And will he be healthy? He's been both. He's got the other two wide receivers on the team doubled up in targets. Um, and then this week they, you know, twenty-seven to ten against the Titans. I mean, against the Browns. So it's not like they needed to keep throwing it to him. Mm-hmm. Um, Quentin had a big game, and then you know, but Lad still did still had like plenty, of f- five for sixty or something. And I think he's done more than I thought he would do on an NFL NFL field quicker. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I I think his stock is up since the rookie draft, and obviously, like you said, the more he and Herbert play together, I mean, more upside than Wes Welker. Mm, Potent. I mean. He- don't it potentially for sure. It just the Wes Welker PPR was, uh, Duh, you just know, comp him to Wes and there you're good. You don't well, have to but be more. It's not that it's, it, but the chargers and Herbert might not throw, have as many attempts as Brady in this prime mm-hmm. when that, you know, when, when Brady unleashed, when they unleashed Brady and it wasn't the defense in the running game anymore, Wes Welker was a key cog in that. And so Herbert and, uh, you know, got a lot and, may never ever be talked about like Brady, you know, won't be, but McConkie's unguard, unguardable. And so, yeah, I, I, I think he's, he's, he's a tough assignment and especially in the slot there, uh, you know, good, good luck. So uh, we had JK Dobbins on the, uh, on the slate here, but I think we're going to maybe skip him on this round here and move into the the next part of the, sh- the show here. Saw him traded for a two the other day. Thought it was a good trade both ways. Yeah. And I, I would I would think that's about, where we stand on the value. I think it's, you know, if you're contending and you need a guy, he's, he's cheap enough to go get. And if you're, if you're rebuilding, he's, you know, he's, he's a good sell to a contender to, 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 you know, you can look up the the box score and say, Hey, you know, and you could maybe add a little something to it and, and go up in some presumable value. Uh, Me and big D were talking earlier today. Like, would you trade J.K. Dobbins for like a, a Tyrone Tracy type if you're like a straight up rebuilder and you just happen to have J.K. Dobbins, right? You're going. Oh, that's a good trade. That's a great trade. This but is just look, all the possibility the, in the, the context, world. The context was if you're a rebuilder and why, yes, I don't want the J.K. Dobbins who is one more injury away from like losing all of his value. Right. If you I'm can, rebuilding, I want the, the Tyrone Tracy. The, with the, the nice, all the, val- all the availability to go up. All the upside. But if I'm a contender, I would day. I'd be I'd be happy to give you my late second round pick for J.K. Dobbins if I need running back depth corner to the playoffs before yeah. trade deadline, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, Big D, real quick, you got anything? No, no, I think I, I think that covers it. My my only thing on the Quentin Johnson thing, just just real quick, just to circle back, is um, what about uh, Leggett? W- would you go Quentin or Leggett? Um, Leggett. I th- I'm sticking with Leggett just for what what the role could be. And uh, I think we're going to get a good look at a T-bone by sticking your head up a bull uh, here at the end of the at the end of the show at the end of the season here. It's be your role with, with with him now that they've you know Thielen will, will will come back I believe I don't know if they'll move him tomorrow or or whatever but Thielen will come back and be good. Uh, but other than that, you know, I think they're going to get a good look at these young guys for Carolina, whether it's Andy or Bryce throwing the ball there. So stick uh, your yeah. head up there. Yeah, it's a good call. All right, uh, let's let's keep it moving here. I want to I want to hit. We'll end with r- the Ravens move Flowers and Deontay Johnson and where you see the the value there. Uh, but let me get Quentin over. Uh, we'll get just want to say mm, one, okay. one guy right. out of there. All right, look at looks <laughs> look at looks great already. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I love what I'm seeing from him. I want to talk about these other two rookie quarterbacks that you know weren't weren't as sought after. Don't get as much love. I think people are starting to come around. But I kind of wanted to play you know kind of ranking May and Knicks right now, week nine. Uh, a little bit here and let's let's start with drake may and the first conversation is may or Knicks. uh big co what do you got Oof. i mean i think it's may i think it should be easily may but Knicks. i like Knicks is growing on me fast big d yeah it's may pretty easy for me say it's gonna be may yeah and not just because where Knicks went to college just it's <laughs> for those of you that don't know big d is a washington native and a washington fan college which makes uh, him not a, the football team which Oregon makes him an anti-organ duck fan I'm, like, uh, I'm, I'm the dog on duck hunt like um 
he's a dog. All right, so we'll start with May then, and let's let's go May. I mean, I you know it's, I think the cat's out of the bag a little for a a cheap buy on May at this point, and maybe there's people who are still like, ah, I'm, I'm, I think he's gonna he still stinks. You know, mm-hmm. I, I didn't like Which him. Any. You're welcome. We've been selling you May for a while, and, so. and he still he still stinks. So Drake May is he a, has he surpassed Dak Prescott, Trevor Lawrence, Baker Mayfield area? for you guys big co would you yeah, would you I, trade him straight up for any uh, any or all of those guys would i give him away for any of those would guys? You, or however you want to yeah frame, i mean frame i'm, I'm ho- in dynasty i'm holding may over all those guys unfortunately r.i.p trevor lawrence right this second even Dan, um, Tre- trevor hasn't been playing terrible the last couple of weeks terrible pick down this last game though. but it's, you know the upside the you know the potential that'll get you fired it, yeah you know, it's just yeah, yeah what it is i mean i I would much rather have Dak Prescott on my dynasty team for safety right now than May, but I think May's going to be May's going to get you so much more. I mean, he's all in this little just in the one one mock that y'all did to, two weeks ago. He was you know a round and a half ahead of you know Dak already. So I mean, I I think I think already like you said, just the value on him and those guys that you mentioned, those guys fell off. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, they're off. having a bad season. And this yeah, is how this exactly, works, right? Exactly. We talked about everything it's, going down. You could, you could basically in dynasty, you can zoom out a little bit, but it's basically buy sell low, you know, buy low, sell high, and right. that's basically the old adage. And in dynasty, you will do that because it always goes up and comes back down. If you don't think it will, just wait till somebody gets hurt. Yeah. That's you know, it always does. Well, there's a there's a weird bubble around some guys that at least get a year of the benefit of the doubt, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, for whatever, or, or multiple times where their value doesn't suffer. And then there's other guys that, you know, immediately, as soon as they're doing anything, they're like, I ah, see, he sucks. See you later. So big D, uh, Lawrence, Prescott, Baker, you taking May over all those guys, or is there one of those? Yeah, guys I mean, on a like, rebuild, if I'm a rebuilder or, or young team, I'm taking, I'm going May all the way. You are in a draft right now. If, if I'm in a draft and I'm drafting, I'll probably take May over all of them. Okay. If I'm a competitor, um, I would I would trade May for most of them, not straight up, but I would I would move off of May to get more consistent floor, I guess you could say. So, how about Brock Purdy or Drake May? Purdy. What are we doing? It'd be Drake May for me. Woo! Big go. You know I don't want to say anybody's name other than Purdy. I would since we're talking about it and it came up, I if you're a contender and you have Drake May, then you're doing something right twice, <laughs> right? Yeah. So like, I I don't want to sacrifice my Drake May just because I'm a. I mean, the contender is very relative as well. Like, I think I'm a contender in multiple leagues that I'm not going to win the championship in right. because that's how it is. That's it's a how, moniker you know, more than anything. When it, we're it having is a, a discussion. It's sure, exactly. So if the price is right and the package is there, obviously you can trade anybody at any time. But I don't want to just say, hey, I'm a you know Dak plus something great. Sure. I, Swap out Drake May, bring in Dak, get a look, get, you know, 10 years older at the quarterback position, big D. And then I got a starting, you know, on RB2 along with him. Maybe we're talking, but I think Drake Drake May is looking good already with a horrible O line and really, yeah, really terrible pass catch. So Brock Purdy, <laughs> Brock Purdy or Drake May? <laughs> Feet to the front. Back fire. to the question. Drake, Drake May's legs. Drake May's legs. Oh, Purdy's fantasy legs points. Have, Purdy's no, legs have been good. No they ain't been no Drake May, but they are good. <laughs> they are good. I uh, think I think I'm with I think I'm going May. Crazy. May's legs. Y'all are out I, of I think you yet. know I think it's the same tier though, to be honest. Like, yes. If, yes. if I'm good drafting, I, I don't think that it, 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 I think it, I mean I think it's I think it's I think it's it's Purdy if you don't have room for error on your team. Yeah. Purdy safe. And he's going to average you 18 and a half points a game for five more years. Easy. And Drake May, he could be Josh Allen. Give me Purdy, man. The 49ers offense with Kyle Shanahan and the weapons and the people that want to go there and the way that scheme is up and like the success he's had. And like he's still so young. (laughs) This is easy. Well, the the, the difference maker is, is that is just that is we've seen Drake may be on a bad team with a bad offensive line and nobody to throw to and the legs and he's scoring 20 to 21 points threat. a game. He's a gamer. Same as <clears throat> so if you can, so if you can advance that, it's, it's, no, it's not a slight on Brock Purdy. We know Brock Purdy is going to be good. Putting him in the same tier, I think is, is spot on right now. Uh, big D, but the fact of, of where you can go from here. And I think Purdy still has room to go up from here, but the fact that the legs are 
what Drake may and the body and the build and the athleticism isn't what it is on Drake may right now. Yeah. You can, you Drake may has the possibility of being in that next tier of 23 to 25 points per game exactly. kind of guy. And Brock Purdy just doesn't well, really not, not consistently, because not you, consistently. Well, you know, because <clears throat> Drake may just ran for 78 yards or something. And you know, like that's what it takes to get that next level. Jared golf is obviously on fire right now. So it's not right to set, but, Kirk Cousins, you know, Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff, they're not going to get one rushing yard. Well, yeah, you know, Goff's on fire, but they're throwing it 18 times a game. That's what so I'm it's saying. like, you and know, so it's not even back at 20 points. You're right. You know, Maybe. So like, exactly. If Drake May can be a good enough quarterback to get you 18 points in fantasy, but he's actually, but he has that game where he runs for 50 or 60 yards rushing in a, in a rushing TD, there's your, there's your 10 more points. Yeah. You right, know, right. so there's your 28 point game where, you know, and sometimes it turns into 35, you know, because yeah. I mean, Drake may ran a lot in the uh, red zone and, and goal line and in and, and college. And uh, yeah, well, that was my argument is he had 800 rushing yards and, mm-hmm. and was big bodied. And mm-hmm. you could and that yeah, and I mean, I think the awareness that's... and the and the he has a feel for already when there's pressure and movement and how he's m- manipulating pockets and shit. I just I like it. Uh, big D, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think just to to, to cap what I think what I'm trying to say or the the way that I think of it in my head is, is Brock Purdy's in the burrow. He's in the Stroud. He's in the, you know, those kind of quarterbacks, right. That uh, the Herbert's Tom Brady, when Brady was playing, like they're going to be really reliant on, you know, good players around them and touchdowns in order to get into that top for one fantasy. overall for a Q, yeah. Q, QB fantasy. But um, Lamar, Josh Allen, uh, Hertz. players like uh, May, uh, Hertz, exactly. They, they yeah. have that, they have that a- added gear where the touchdown differential doesn't matter as much as it does for your pocket passer. So there's a reason why Burrow starts so cold and all of a sudden he's hot. You know, some of that is injury. Some of that is just coaching, et cetera, et cetera. But the point is, is that when, when he's not able to move or, or just doesn't move because of his, the way that the style that he plays, I mean, right there, that's going to drop some of your floor. The, the unique thing with Purdy is Purdy has been using his wheels more, but as yeah. he gets his pass catchers back, as he gets his offense around him, like Jay was saying, I think that floor goes away because he doesn't need to run, right? Because he's got all those other players. So so for me, May is, is if we're talking about tiers, he's at the top of that tier over Purdy, but it's not because I don't like Purdy and it's not because yeah. I, I wouldn't take Purdy in the in the right oh. situation. Oh, we love that. Purdy. Yeah, it's just, the, it's just the, um, the ceiling side of it. To me, he has that quarterback one in three or four year potential to be number one fantasy quarterback overall. So I agree. Uh, all right. Quickly, same question for Knicks, Knicks or Dak, Trevor Baker. They go crazy. Maybe Knicks crazy. Big D. I would take Trevor over Knicks and then probably Knicks over the rest. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> but the reason why I say that is I, I still don't, I know Denver's looking decent. They're they're going all right. I still don't know about Sean Payton in the long run in Denver. Mm. And if Sean Payton's is, isn't there, I don't know how how much I what believe in Knicks out out of that system. And so that that's well, why I say that, dude. They, they, everything Sean that happens, yeah, solidified. Sean Payton and Bode shouldn't. They they just be synonymous. winning. They just bought a house together. <laughs> and Denver Broncos dude, paid for it. Everything yeah. that just went down with the Russell, Russell Wilson, Wilson trade, paid they go. No, I, I get Bode. it. Yeah, they're they're not going anywhere this year. Either one and, of them. Probably not next year. Not, but this year would have gone the way it should have gone. Sean Payton would probably be out of there. But they're six. What are they? Five and three. They're they're they just lost. They're yeah. they yeah, winning, they and they don't even have any money to spend. It's yeah. crazy. That Payton yeah. and Knicks are, are not going anywhere. They're they're going to be there together for a year or two at least. I think people would be arguing that Knicks is scoring a bunch of fantasy more fantasy points than May. And yeah, yeah, I just what May when he's what he's doing on the field, it looks more impressive and more sealed like. To, than what Nix is doing. And Nix has had some games where he looks pretty good for playing co- the quarterback position, but the legs have been really what's driving it. And then we just gave May all the love for the legs and, and Nix is, is doing the same thing. I, yeah. I can't quite put him up there with Drake May and in that next tier right now, I'd say even same tier with, with Trevor and Baker. May Nix is growing on me fast. May's mm-hmm. better. Yeah. I, and I think there's a stat. I think Nix is like 28th as far as when it, in a clean pocket. Mm-hmm. For for passing in the in the NFL right now, so like if it's if it's going like it should, Nick's is not good yet. 
Right. But when it breaks down, he's been amazing. He also has nobody but Cortland to throw it to. Very true. Uh, and they, they haven't done a good... But and he's a rookie. They're, they're, do, they're also doing a good job yeah. moving him around and, and playing to his strengths, which is move him, boot him, mm-hmm. let him get the... He's a big, physical, strong kid, you know, and, and apparently a great pass catcher because he had an excellent... Uh, had a nice, strong... Excellent he has, he has the ability to be a tight end if it doesn't yeah, work out of the quarterback. Really nice touchdown. Yeah, Cort- Cortland run should be back. your backup quarterback in an emergency situation because Cortland threw a dime over there too. David Montgomery's pass two weeks ago was oh, ridiculous. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that was zero hesitation and a, and a really, it. really good throw. Uh, all right. I think... Mm, I think I'm. I think I would probably take Baker over Knicks right now. Is that blasphemous? No, Baker was leading the league in touchdowns last week yeah. before all his receivers got hurt. Dude, I got Baker on a team with Josh Allen. I haven't started him one time, but I think he's scoring more points. Like, <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> I should have started Baker most weeks, but I can't bench Josh Allen. Like, Baker has erased all my worries and doubts. But you know, there'll probably be another debt because this is what happens with every quarterback. Lamar mm-hmm. Jackson was this guy last year. That was the de- everybody. It, it was his fantasy points were down. He'd been hurt, he, you know, and By just low, so high. And, and, and which we and are recording we are. in the middle of this so, Chiefs Bucks game. So, so if he's having a bad week, hopefully with, Baker doesn't get no, hurt. <laughs> uh, wide receivers, then he must be bad. You know, well, he crushed one, it last week. One recency uh, bias. I think week it's against three really weeks in a row, three hundred plus passing yards, three hundred or and three TDs and multiple interceptions. But it is what it is. All right, uh, let's get to this last thing real quick. I just want to touch on the value and how you guys are viewing Zay Flowers with the addition of Deontay Johnson. Now, in reading stuff today, from everything I could dredge up, it was Deontay Johnson's going to come in there and kind of get the Nelson Aguilar role. And Big D, you talked about that last night in the Patreon. Yeah. episode that we did that you kind of felt like maybe that was was kind of how that was going to pay off or play out. I find it hard to believe that they're not going to that he's not going to take Bateman's role uh, when you just traded for a guy who's been, you know, 30, 30 plus percentage of target share and air yard share and first read share from where he just was. Obviously, it was Carolina and Thielen's hurt and they got a bunch of rookies. <laughs> uh, but Zay Flowers is out there just with, you know, 25 plus percent target share on this team. He's a perfect match for, for Lamar Jackson and the ad living that goes on there. I feel like they're building s- such a great rapport with each other in this Munkin Munkin offense. I find it hard to believe that that Zay's just going to be, you know, rendered useless, but I, I can see some, you know, there is already some games where people are like, you know, the volume, if they're running the shit out of the ball and beating the hell out of somebody that it's going to be down for Zay flowers in that particular game. And they're not going to pass a lot. So you add Deontay to this mix. I view it as long-term potential buy low window for flowers. If anybody is worried about it for this season, I, I might be a, a little concerned that I've removed just some of the volume floor from flowers that we've kind of been seeing build. I wouldn't worry about it at all. Were you, right. Weren't you already concerned about volume a little bit that, in a Lamar Jackson offense? Lamar like, Jackson has, you know, almost 2,400 yards this year. His third receiver has 12 catches. Lamar, Lamar right. is playing. Excellent. Lamar's crushing it. They got the best running back in the league right this second. As far as production, say flowers is absolutely killing it. And Rashad Bateman's got 25 catches and 450 yards. You know, Bateman's look great. He's Bate, finally coming Bateman into has, his own a little Bateman bit. Bateman has been playing well. This is a team that wants to win the championship and that trade. They didn't was, need to make it. That trade was, well, that's what it, their they just, third receiver. Like they're they, like, fuck it. Lad on. They, they fucking got, Zay rolled his ankle the other week and they were probably like, mm. oh, fuck. Exactly. They want to win the championship. They got nothing behind. Ba- that Nelson Aguilar is their third wide receiver. And that wide receiver spot is so far down because it's filled up with two, two tight, tight ends. ends and another running back. A and third then tight the, end that they know, throw it to. So, right, right behind them with three less, ca- two, five less catches. Charlie Kohler has five less catches than, Nelson, than their third wide receiver. Mm. So that's the third tight end. So, this is just a championship trade for the team. Yeah, obviously obvious. you bring in a tra- you're going to bring in a wide receiver as good at getting open as Deontay Johnson. That helps for me. I think. I mean, if Zay Flowers is healthy, I don't think. I think outside of hurt ankle is the only thing that takes away really any volume. It's not I, coming out of your lineup at all. No, not at all. Uh, I mean, if, if three weeks from now, if Deontay Johnson's catching five a game, then that's taken away from Zay Flowers. Mm-hmm. But Maybe it's not. Maybe it's taking everything away from Aguilar and a couple away from Bateman. Right. You know, I just flowers was there. He's been there. He's part of it. They're on a roll. They're hard to beat. And I mean, you know, I, 
to me, I, I, I didn't bat an eye for Zay Flowers when they picked it up. And for me, to me, it was, it was a big opportunity. To me, it was a huge blow to Deontay Johnson rest of the yes, season. Right. Yes, right. To me, all the, the the biggest change for me was I took Deontay Johnson out of my starting lineup in one team and put him on my bench. And I said, "Dang it, I need that guy." Mm-hmm. And now he's gone. Yeah, he's absolutely gone. I'm. I cannot even start him until. Which, maybe two or three weeks down the road and he's up and going and maybe, but maybe he's got everything from Aguilar and he's got everything from Bateman. But I mean, Bateman's been there for years. Uh, yeah. I just don't, th- I think this is, this is not, I think this is, well, you made a good point about Bateman. Take him off the, take him out the league, take him out of your lineup and, and put him on your bench. Unfortunately, a few weeks ago, I felt you made a good point about Bateman about how uh, his precision and knowing when to be where, and that, that, style doesn't really jive with what Lamar Jackson does. Well, in recent weeks, Lamar's been playing more quarterback. I sure. feel like he's sure he has. so that is kind of driving up mm-hmm. uh, jiving and you've seen the connection with Bateman and I've been like, damn, Bateman's coming on. They're doing mm-hmm. what they need to do. Then they go and trade for Deontay Johnson. It's like, they didn't need to do that. That doesn't help anyone. But it was so I cheap that it's a bummer now. Right. Cause he, well, he's an so unrestricted, free, unrestricted free agent after this year. So this is yeah. like just for this year. They don't yeah. Care. Uh, pulled up his it's contract. A good, get a ring. This is not the week to buy his a flowers. Cause he just balled out. Crushed. But it will be inconsistent. They don't need to throw it. They don't need to do anything. They don't well, have that's to do what everybody was they worried they about. Want. And there's been a week or two like that. But other than that, it's been fucking gangbusters. Yeah. Zay. But there, there may be another opportunity, right? Yeah. And Deontay's getting uh, acclimated. And yeah, there's it's a long season. I don't know if you have trade deadlines or not. You shouldn't in your dynasty leagues. But like, just give it some patience. Definitely don't sell them. You got to keep trying to buy him. Like, yeah. he's just a fucking dog. He's just awesome. I love it. And it Babe. jives exactly with what. Lamar wants to do. We were big on him coming out before he ever went to this system. He fits in this system. I have questions about the volume on any given week. When you have a Lamar Jackson and then you add Derrick Henry. Oh, mm-hmm. wait, y'all got Derrick Henry? Right. I didn't, even, I didn't even think about it. Y'all got Derrick Henry? The Ravens have Derrick Henry? You know, like you're getting punched in the mouth and people don't know what to do. So Zay Flowers is going to be inconsistent moving forward, I think, and, and maybe in the short term. But like he's so good. This is what you do in Dynasty. You have to bet on the talent. And just go with that. And the talent is immaculate. He's a good dude. He works hard. That's all there is to it. He's eighth in PPR points. He's ridiculous. Big D, Big D bring us home, baby. Yeah, I mean, he was uh, he was super efficient last game. He had six targets. He had caught five of them. He scored 29 points in PPR. So I'm not worried about Zay Flowers at all. In fact, I think this helps him. What I worry about and what I said on Patreon, I'll give you a sneak peek under the hood, was I feel like, A, it takes away from wide receiver three. I think it helps Bateman because he plays the outside. He's a different body style than Zay or Deontay. But really what I think it does is it affects the tight end play. Um, I don't know how much 12 personnel we'll see with Likely and Andrews being on the on the field. I think they might go more of the, the three wide receiver sets. I was trying to look up real quick just to see what they were at, and I couldn't find it. But um, I, I would imagine that they were probably playing more 12 personnel than they were – with three wide receivers with, um, you know, your third wide receiver being Ag- Aguilar. And I think once Deontay gets up there, you know, remember Monken was a wide receiver coach before he was anything else. So I think he wants to scheme a three wide receiver and he wants Lamar to be that kind of quarterback. And so, so for me, it's, it's the Mark Andrews, likely the bottom of the third um, type of, or your third wide receiver production that that's going to get evaporated by Deontay over Zay Flowers or even Bateman. I think Bateman is solidified in his role on the outside. And, you know, that's, you know, my last thing I'll say is just Bateman's 24 year old for 24 years old folks. Um, he, he feels like he's older than that to me. At least he did. And he's only 24 years old. He's had a bunch of injuries and now he's starting to play. And, and uh, I think he's, I think he's been getting coached up by Monk. And so, in Ravens, I trust on, on this offense, man. You know, I think it's been highly documented that Lamar is my favorite player in the league right now. And uh, there's a reason why, man. He can he can produce, and I believe that Zay will be just fine. I, I don't even believe that it'll be any more inconsistent than what it has been, which is, you know, he has a floor of, like, there is a couple of games in there where he got five out and, you know, me too. So, um, but, but for the most part, I think that he's, you know, he's a solid back end wide receiver one um, in fantasy with wide receiver, higher wide receiver one upside. Love it. All right. Well, we got the tripod and, and we got the quad pod, the, uh, I'm not supposed to talk the ones and twos yeah. talking. So he's already, I'm sure upset that this episode's gone long. Be so we gotta, I have myself to blame. We got to get out of here. We appreciate you. We'll be right back with uh, with another episode. We're going to talk 
Must buys. Must buys. Trade targets, trade targets in every position for rebuilders and contenders. So make oh. sure you go check that out. You can come get the $5 holler. You can come get the free Discord. You get an extra episode uh, every week right now reviewing uh, the NFL after it happens, typically on Sunday night. Uh, and you can ask us all the questions, and we're going to be doing plenty, plenty of uh, rebuilding stuff here, kind of moving forward and turn our focus at least one time a week to strictly rebuilding. So make sure you're following along so you can get on board with that. So with that five-star review on the podcast, do it. Tap yep. it in. You got Big D, you got Big Co, you got all Jason. Bigs. How big is that, Casey? D? We're out of here. Peace. Peace.